Welcome to Between Two Nerds. I'm Courtney Taylor. And I'm JP Karliak. And we are here. Uh, we're back in 2021 with our wee little show about the importance of uh, civil engagement, voting. Being involved in your democracy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so we're back with uh, lots more cool guests this season and some teeny little things you can do to stay engaged. Uh, one of which today is going to be, well, we're going to start off easy this year. We're going to start off with taking your cell phone and putting your reps in there. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to go ahead and look up your reps in the Google search. And then you put them in your contacts. And then I always suggest doing the, the, uh, the DC number and the local number. So for instance, here's my, my buddy, Diane Feinstein. Hey, everybody leave me alone. Um, and, uh, and here I've got her work number, the 212202 and her LA number, the 310 mm -hmm. and also her email. So I can just keep letting her know what I'm thinking. Um, I also have Gavin and, uh, and now Alex Padilla. So exciting. You just reminded me that I have to change Alex Padilla and sure. Uh, I also have to change because uh, I was an Adam Schiff person, but now that I've moved, I don't know who my rep is, and I need to find out. Well, maybe we should live stream you looking it up later. I feel like yeah. it's I feel like it's Alan Lowenthal. So I'm, I don't know. We're gonna I think we're that's gonna do right. this as a live stream later, right. so we can all yeah. do it together. Yeah. Um, so we can watch JP through the progress process. Um, because we have no time to waste. We have a super exciting. So last year we we did this show on Instagram, and we did I don't know eight episodes without recording it to Instagram. <laughs> it was it was it was in the early days before Instagram did that whole archiving thing. That's so. right. And so they were hand cranking it. They yep. were just hand cranking it. And now um, we've now moved over to YouTube. So um, we're gonna just get right to it with our super exciting, most amazing guest. We did have her on last season but since it did not get archived it's like it never happened so you know her as the voice of cinderella um she's in more marvel but she has more marvel roles than any other female voice actor both animation and games and you might know her as femme shep commander shepherd in the mass effect series we have the amazing and talented Jennifer Hale with us. Woo -woo! Hey, you guys. Woo -woo! Woo -woo! Woo -woo! Woo -woo! Oh my God. Woo -woo! This time I'll exist past today. I know. It's so I'm exciting. So, I'm so excited. <laughs> and it's like, finally, it's like you are between two nerds. You're between, I am. Yeah. I am between snuggled in between two nerds. Yeah. So, <laughs> yay. It's all working out the way it's supposed to now that we're all newfangled and fancy. Yeah. Yes. That's right. <laughs> so what's going on mama i am overjoyed to be here i am overjoyed that it is 2021 i am ingesting all the lessons of 2020 mm -hmm. and there are, many. there are many um <laughs> you know community screams to the forefront community in any form you can get it i found one of my coping tools for 2020 was every time i felt hollow i would reach in and and find a place to give to a place, a friend, something, because that giving made the hollow better. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, yeah, now it's an interesting time, I think, right after uh, whenever this will appear, the inauguration was a couple days ago, which is like, yes, I find myself just doing this a lot. <sighs> watching leadership happen, watching initiatives take place, watching more sane debate right now. And, and having everyone look at the crazy people going, what? You know, I just am enamored with actual functionality. Um, and we're going to have press conferences. Yes. I listened. I actually geeked out over know what's last going night. On. I was, she's really good. <laughs> she is. She reminds me she's of Jennifer cool. Garner from Alias, which is exciting. She, I was thinking in a younger version of um, Alice and Jenny, you know? like Oh, sure. You know, I'm except that she goes up at the end of her sentence. What's that? The little Felicia Day thrown in for a good measure. Yes, yes. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Um, to watch her, guys. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like she's definitely a nerd for sure. Oh yeah. Uh, well, you know, now we have a science 
cabinet position. We have a, a, yeah. a cabinet post for science. Like, what? It's exciting. It's but you know, very it's exciting. happening as well. Yeah, it's it's striking me so much that, like, there's I feel a tremendous sense of relief, and I'm so conscious that there is so much to do. Like, I I went on Twitter today and people were talking about Citizens United and um the I, the question of our corporations people should they have the right to donate in the way that they donate to uh political campaigns and to decisions made in places of power should they have that much influence and i think everyone probably has you know a gut reaction to that and it's important that whatever that gut reaction is take action on that like you guys were just showing with the phones and stuff because if and one thing that's whatever your your opinions are politically that's become really clear is if you don't demonstrate in a an effective way <laughs> um in a peaceful effective and clear way what you want the system will run amok without you and it will not go well so mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's most of um uh decisions are going to be made you can be part of them or not be part of them yeah you, and i think you not making them is not going to make them not happen so yeah, we, if we take our hands off the wheel, the car goes off the road. And we may not like the tree that it hits, you know? Maybe we yeah. wanted that tree or that car. Yeah. And in driving that car, there are greater decisions to be, there are more decisions to be made than just buying new cars every so many years. You also Amen. have to drive the car. <laughs> yes, where do I want to go? I didn't yeah. want that to happen. Well, you didn't pick the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that it, you bring up a good point, Jen, because that's because this is an off year. And of course, secret, there's never an off year because there's elections all the time. Um, the our one of our big themes is just keeping your representatives accountable to what you want to happen, whether you voted for them or you didn't. Um, and perhaps especially if you voted for them, because so many of us have the habit of being like, well, my guy got in or my gal got in, so okay. it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's so not that it is about why did you vote for them and are they following through on those promises? Yeah. And this this is it's such a fascinating time for all that because we're overwhelmed. Right. There's so much we are inundated with so much data every day, like a thousand times the amount of data our parents were. And yet we still have to sort it. We still have to adult because if we don't adult someone else will and they may not adult in the way that we would like things to be going and if we didn't speak up kind of can't <laughs> complain you know yeah and and yeah. it's so true that there are so many i mean the it's the it's m m awesome in that you have so many ways to reach out to your representatives that you can actually have conversations with them on twitter you can you know you can go and see them you know where they're gonna be speaking there's there's so much technology at your fingertips but there's also so much technology at your fingertips and um it's so it's it's really important to filter for yourself you know like yeah prioritize that you are like tidal waved um you know for me instead of <clears throat> instead of i was i was getting so overwhelmed that i was having to take days off and um now it's just setting up times for myself where i check in not mm -hmm. completely being like an open faucet of yeah of information all the time but also being um like like particular about what i'm getting and also being like hey you know so uh the <clears throat> delegates are being elected here in California mm -hmm. for the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's something I want to be part of. There are other things that I'm like, oh, you know what, I have to, I have to kind of pick my battles and, and, you know, be interested in certain things, but, you know, don't let yourself get pummeled by all the responsibility, all the news and stuff. Um, it's so funny, you know, sort of for me, that brings into the concept of self-care, you know, like you got to take care of yourself, but this is also part of taking care of yourself taking care of the wider world that you live in and making, having your voice and your preferences known in that wider world. And how do you set up the systems? I mean, somebody who, you know, doesn't have kids will set up different systems to somebody who does. And somebody who is a single parent will have different time options to somebody who isn't, you know, who has a partner. And, you know, it's just, 
like how many balls are you juggling and how can you really it's about it sounds like setting up systems i think is yeah. what you're saying well like some people aren't aren't you know great actually talking to people so there's all kinds of things where you can you know you can use resist bot it's called resist bot but you can use resist bot um you can text resist to 50409 and it, you can talk to your reps about anything. Yeah. Um, you know, even no matter what your party is or your affiliations or concerns are, it's a really easy way to, to get it across, get your messages across, your wants across without actually having to call. Cause I know a lot of people are like, I don't actually want to talk to somebody yeah. in someone's office, but there's also lots of people out there who are creating sort of five minutes of, of business a day. I'm trying to do like, five minutes a day, um, five days a week that I just can, uh, if you can find someone um, for, this is an example of someone who is uh, in the democratic side of things, but um, Jessica Craven does a um, chop wood, carry water. Yeah. Uh, and it's just an example. Obviously, if your party is affiliation is, is different there, I'm sure there are people who are doing the same things, but that you, you know, there are scripts, there are access points for you to get to your representatives or talk about certain issues. And so to use technology in a way that you can get your needs and wants across and also keep your. Yeah. I think, you know, listening to you just then, it, I'm reminded that there isn't, there are two sides right now in our, in our country and that we've been in this vacuum for or this situation for a while where it's an either or and one of our big jobs that i see for myself now is finding common ground and to return to something like citizens united like you were mentioned you mentioned resist bot and i thought is that name even appropriate still and then i thought yes it is because one of the thing that's happened over the last few decades is just the massive amounts of money from large corporate interests going into politics and government and steering things their way. I mean, Jeff Bezos is, if you put a pin in his wealth at the beginning of the pandemic and you put a, another pin, the other end of that line would be, I think it was about a month or a month and a half ago, his increase in wealth was such that he could have given all 876,000 of his employees a $105,000 bonus a piece, and he would have had the same amount of wealth he had at the beginning of the pandemic. For me, that's a broken system. As people can't pay their bills, we don't have a $15 an hour minimum wage, which right now, regardless of your politics, we're all people and we all need to eat and pay our bills. If you actually inflation adjusted you know, costs of living, et cetera, that really should almost be a $25 an hour minimum wage right now. Um, obviously, that's some people just went, what? Pfft, you know, never going to happen. But there's a wonderful um, guy out of, uh, he's in Seattle. His name's Nick Hanauer. He uh, has this uh, Pitchfork Economics is his uh, his organization. And he is a plutocrat. I had to look that up. It is somebody wealthy enough to determine public policy because they have so much money. He was a founding member of Amazon and probably eBay, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. And he wrote an article in August of 2014 that I read and I never forgot it. It's still with me. It's called The Pitchforks Are Coming. And it was to his fellow zillionaires. And it was that we can't keep grabbing all this. It's going to get really bad and the pitchforks will come when you stop doing this. I don't know how many have listened. It doesn't seem like a lot of listening has been happening over there. But one of the things that he has done with his zillion is um, he has funded a lot of research into Seattle's uh, shifting over to the $15 an hour minimum wage. He has researched and gathered data of its actual impact on small businesses, and it is net positive. It's extremely positive. As he puts it, you know, when all that money goes to CEOs and to bonuses and to a small group of people, they can only buy so many pairs of pants. You know, you put a spread all that money out among all their employees There's a lot more pants being bought, a lot more cups of coffee, a lot more dinners out. If people can't even afford to have dinner in a restaurant they work in and they work in a medium, you know, sort of mid-level restaurant, something's wrong. I, for one, am baffled by the fact that we measure economic health by the stock market. Like, I don't know a lot of people who participate in the stock market. I know some. 
you know, it's not like there's just a few, but I know some, but I know a lot who don't, yeah. you know, and that's not, that's not why we're here. You know, at the end of the day, you don't lie in your deathbed going, I wish my portfolio had been better. <laughs> you, <know>? <laughs> <laughs> you just don't. <laughs> yeah. So I think regardless of what side of the aisle you're on or where you're, where you come down on some of the more fundamentally democratic or Republican issues, I think we have to start with the human issues. Like, do we want, what do we want? I, the pandemic has shown a massive light on the need for healthcare. That's for sure. You know, we'd like to not die because we don't have insurance. I mean, the transmission rates in some of our more socioeconomically disadvantaged communities happen because people don't have insurance. They don't even know that hospitals are required to pay for COVID care. You just go, you know, it's, it's nut bar. Anyway. And yep. you being Canadian huh. also can speak to, you know, the dichotomy of just being born, you know, yeah. 50 miles one way or the other. And yeah. I'm, know. yeah, I'm lucky enough to have a dual citizenship and I spent my entire life after the age of two in the U S and last year have uh, spent some time in Canada since the pandemic. And ironically, I had the exact same surgery in the U S and in Canada. I have giant seemed to, I had this period for a year where I just grew giant kidney stones. <laughs> I don't know if keto was the thing for me, uh, <laughs> but I had massive kidney stones that grew very quickly. And I had that surgery in the U S and my experience was in the U S I showed up at the um, surgical intake place and uh, I had waited a bit too long. It got kind of hairy. So I needed the surgery then. And they said, okay, $468. And I was like, wait, what? Before they'll take you in. So you got to hand it and I'm checking in for surgery. Nobody warned me this was coming. And then I had, they o overdid, they didn't listen to me and gave me way too much medication, et cetera. And I got quite sick, ended up back in the ER that night, another bill, another set of bills. And then that was in August in May, March, the stones came back and I went to the ER. It was when COVID was beginning. And I spent about six and a half hours sitting there trying not to breathe anyone's air and I got in and I, and they couldn't find a space for me to wait because they were so busy. They put me on a gurney in a hallway right by the doors that kept opening and closing. And it ended up there because someone called me and said, last minute, I need you in the ER right now. And I was like, wait, I feel fine. She's like, no, I need you right now, right now. What we see here, go now. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm laying there in the hallway with the cold air blasting in on me. And there, somebody was trying to find me a blanket, but couldn't do it. They were really busy. And before they'll take me in, finally it six and a half hours later, like 1030 at night, they said, well, okay, we need a thousand dollars. I was like, okay. I just handed in my credit card and went in. And then I had subsequent bills and I have killer insurance, yeah. killer insurance. So that was one situation. And then I came here and they were never actually able to remove the stones. They just did some other stuff, play stents and stuff to let my kidney settle down. And then COVID hit. And then I was out of there, had the same surgery here in Canada. I had lots of care. Nobody was around because it was COVID. So I got, got in right away. The surgery was lovely. No one asked me for a dime, not one penny. And the care I got and the follow-up I got, I was like, I couldn't keep up with it. I was like, I, okay, I'm coming. Okay. <laughs> I forgot to get that scan. Sorry. You know, and it's all resolved now, knocking on wood. Um, but it was a radically different experience. Rad and I just think of people who don't have the means or like for them, that means they're not going on vacation that year or they can't, they have to cut back on school. They have to skip a couple, you know, semesters of university because that happened. And let's not even talk about student loan debt. Uh, you know, I know that in Canada, I think your more expensive universities, I have researched because I have a kid, might run you six, $8,000 a year in tuition. You know, there's one that's 30 and it's nuts. It's a really, really super weird, exclusive kind of thing, but maybe 12, I, it's not a lot, you know, it's, it might, 20 would be kind of crazy. I remember running a calculator when my son was born 10 and a half years ago, that if he ended up being an Ivy league kid, I would need $368,000 to put him through school. So I just started saving money, <laughs> you know, going down the real estate road. That's what that is for me. So, yeah. yeah it's, I mean, it's, there's sorry. There's a, there's an, a, definitely an emotional response to, especially the healthcare stuff that you were talking about, Jen. And yeah. you know, having been through the healthcare system, like yeah. a like a pull through car wash many, multiple times. But um, I I the thing that that hits me 
that has come up so much, especially when we talk about welfare and we talk about uh, universal health care and we talk about all of the different, even Social Security. Yeah. Is the is that is that toxic concept that people that corporations and the government have put into our system of handouts that we we're give, it's we're giving you handouts that you don't deserve as opposed to getting back to w- what the integral purpose of government is which is to provide for its citizens to make sure that we have life liberty and the pursuit of happiness yeah. which sometimes necessitates that we help each other up by the bootstraps instead of requiring each person to individually pull themselves up by them. You reminded me of three things just in that moment. I'll go backwards. The first thing is uh, a dear friend of mine was um, an archaeology person, and she's actually read, or anthropology, anyway, she's smart, (laughs) and has actually read Darwin's Origin of Species a couple of times. And that phrase that gets touted so much in the U.S., which is survival of the fittest, is in there maybe a half a dozen times. And a phrase that pops up a couple hundred times and that has led to the the success of the species to date, (laughs) we'll see, is community and cooperation. That is how we survive. And, you know, one of the things I've noticed going back and forth a little bit more the last couple of years, Canada to U.S., the U.S. is a very individualistic culture. You know, it's achievement first and it's standing out of the individual. And in Canada, what I experience of it is like the prime directive in the U.S. in Canada is is everyone okay? Okay, go do your thing, you know? And in the U.S., it's make your mark, make your mark. Yeah, is everybody all right? Okay, anyway, make your week if you're not, you know? And and it's it's toxic, as you said. It's just toxic. And if you want to talk welfare, let's talk welfare. Let's take that on for a second, shall we? Let's talk about corporate welfare. Because this is the thing. I got some, Katie Porter, God, don't you, anyway. Let's talk about the general concept of um, corporate welfare. Pharmaceutical companies get research grants from the U.S. government. The money that goes to pay for those grants is our, your, my tax dollars, your tax dollars, court, you know, all of our, your tax dollars out there. It's our tax dollars. They get these massive grants to research new drugs. And they, they figure it out and they discover them, which is really cool. And then they take them to market and they turn around and charge a bloody fortune. And do they pay back that money that they got from the government? No, no. Huh, that sounds a lot like a handout. And let's talk about another angle of it, which is um, look at places like, you know, Walmart, companies like that, that don't pay a living wage. Those people, in order to be functional enough to come to work, need enough food and need to be a basic level of healthy. So that doesn't always happen on the money they make. They're going to have to rely on assistance, handouts, to to come and do that. Where does the money for that assistance come from? Me, you, all of us. We have just subsidized with our tax dollars and our sweat, their profits. Jeff Bezos' profits come out of our bank, our, our wallets come off of our backs. That's a handout. And that's why all that corporate, part of why that corporate money is heavy into our government right now. Citizens United led to all this. They have the power to keep all that in place. And then they, this is why critical thinking is so important. Like, I'm going to bring in another angle here. Around the industrial, before the industrial revolution, things like tables or, you know, cool headphones or a shirt like this, like people with money, a lot of money had them made. And then mass production came to being, right? Anybody could have it. So cool. Once everybody had a black shirt and a table and a car, they didn't really need another one. So advertising was born. And the base message of advertising is you're not enough unless you have the new one. You're not enough unless you have this other version. You're not enough without our stuff, you know? And that whole mentality, that whole machine that convinces you that you don't really know, they know better than you. It separates you from yourself and your own gut instincts and everything else. It gets in there and causes this break in your system so they can bleed you dry. You know, it's all part of the same system. Yeah. And I think, too, there's something to be said. I mean, just to circle back to um, 
the whole welfare thing is to that there's this this narrative about who collects welfare mm. and who you know that that there is the this sort of image of like a welfare queen yeah. never a welfare king um mm -hmm. <laughs> but a, a welfare queen and they get on onto the system and they stay on the system and they continue to have children and there there is there's never success stories that are born of this you never no, i am actually a, a product of uh, we collected welfare when i was a kid mm -hmm. because we needed it and now um you know that welfare helped me to be fed and get to school and yeah. um, be able to start the you know the companies that i've started in my life that pay taxes and i pay yeah. taxes and um i think uh, there's this really damaging narrative where nobody goes after the success stories and says, Hey, you know, everything that is a, a handout is, a, is a problem. Yeah. And so I wish they would sort of rebrand. They, I mean, I wish there were stories being told of, of, you know, loudly of people that have gotten assistance and then gotten back on their feet and shown these success stories, because I certainly am one. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people, um, are, uh, you know, I know quite a few people who grew up on sort of government cheese and, and, you know, um, food stamps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they're there for a reason. And, uh, you know, it's people spout these narratives without even having any proof. And yeah. when I say, Hey, I actually took advantage of that system, you know, yeah. and it really helped me yeah. and my mother and my sister, and we all, are, you know, our success stories, um, and people are like, Oh, because it doesn't quite fit in with what what gets told about yeah this you know it's so shame has been used as a tool for control in those areas like when i think whenever you're feeling shame about something take a step back and just check around who's trying to control me who's trying to put me in a box because that that's a tool right it's and you know also there was a a great sentiment i think over the last four years um that something whenever we go through periods of time where things need to change and someone needs to change this i just keep bringing back to that phrase we are the ones we've been waiting for we can tell those stories we can raise that up we can presence that i was talking to uh, uh a, a man the other day who's who's an extraordinary craftsman he's working on some stuff here and he's an older white man who grew up in south central all his closest friends are people of color. And he is now being treated like he is a racist jerk. And he's not. And it's just because of the way he looks. Hearing him tell that story reminded me that as I presence what I presence for my friends and for what I think needs to happen for, you know, what I can support as a white, a, a white appearing um, person for people of color, I'm also going to keep in mind not to generalize, not to stereotype, to just pause and really see the person. Mm -hmm. Because it, as a woman, you know, coming up through, for speaking of women's progress and women's rights and, and equality for women, one of the things that I see sometimes done from that corner, I can speak to that because I've, I've lived in it is I see some women turning around and doing to men what was done to them. And it's on all of us to carry that forward as well. Like, let's take it to the next level. Let's let's just flip the coin to the other side. Let's go into the new world where we're all succeeding. We're all coming in together. You know, that's a few different topics in one, but anyway. We have a huge, I mean, we do. We have a huge opportunity to make a, a new beginning yeah. Here, no matter what side of politics you come from. And, and I think it's also something that we need to take into consideration that it's not two sides because everyone gets lumped into these two baskets yeah. and we're not, you know, like uh, it's, I, I see these raging generalizations. Not every Republican is a Trump supporter, yeah. you know, not every Democrat is, uh, you know, trying to turn this into a, a socialist state. Mm -hmm. um, you know this country it's it there's a there's a whole variety of viewpoints and so we do have this opportunity to kind of you know clear the air and start to get back to you know nuance yeah see each other's people yeah and on that note i guess what what are you hoping for in the next since we have this new sort of 
slate, if you will. Um, what are you hoping that, you know, I know that you're spending time in Canada as well, but here in the US, um, what are you hoping that our representatives are going to be accomplishing in the next year? I hope that they play a long game. I hope that they focus on policies that create a sustainable economy, not one that gets them to the next election, but that is a 30, 40, 50 year game. I hope that as these policies are considered, they're looked at under that lens. I hope that my son can be left a world I'm proud to leave him where people are not forgotten. I hope we go to a to humanism where we really kind of, we use Maslow's hierarchy as a guide. Let's just start with food. Can we get everybody food? Can we get everybody shelter? Can can we look at how we're treating each other so then we can maybe take on some belonging? Can we look at our education system? Maybe we can create some, some uh, amazing opportunities for people. I don't know if you've seen the movie, Charlie Wilson's War. It's one of the greatest mm -hmm. illustrations of the long game I've ever seen. The last 10 minutes of that movie, I was like, wait, what? You know, the movie's about them spending all this money to assist the Taliban, you know, to assist the wars there in Afghanistan. And at the end, they go to Congress and ask for a fraction of that money for schools and hospitals. And they're like, no, it's not military equipment. We're not spending it on that. And therein has was birthed one of the greatest terrorism cells of our time because we overlooked hospitals and schools. You know, we overlooked the basics of what people need to be human. That's what I hope our representatives will look at. I love that. I hope we as citizens recognize that there's a lot of work to do to put regular people in office, not pe people of intelligence, mm -hmm. people of character who consider all sides. I don't want to see us become a pendulum all one way or all the other. I just want to see us return to human values and people who are pow power oriented are are disempowered. <laughs> you know, my distinction, if I'm on Twitter and I'm tweeting away about stuff having to do with politics, I don't do a party distinction. For me, the only distinction is bought or not or works for us. That is my distinction. What I want to take on is the corporate ownership of the mechanisms of this planet because they are global and their concerns have very little to do with us. Yeah. Well, if you're watching, and you are one of Jennifer Hale's representatives. You better get to work. <laughs> get on that. <laughs> That's what I'm asking for. Because I am still, as soon as this pandemic settles down, girl, I'm a two two cities person. I'm a two countries person. Yeah. 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 How is that? And, and what? So, on a, a sort of lighter note. Yeah. What are you doing? Like, how are you? How are you? <laughs> I mean, I. I get. I like. I. I'm like. I guess it's the pandemic. It's just where we are right now. And, yeah. um, but in, in these days, pandemic or no, how are you kind of dealing with all of the remoteness and staying creative and, and hopeful and like feeding your inner beast? <laughs> I am being as gentle as I possibly can mm -hmm. with myself and everyone around me. You know, I take on a theme for each year and this year it's grace. Just grace everywhere you can for myself. <laughs> it's hard. I miss my friends. I miss my friends. And I'm in a different country because that's where it's safest for my kid right now uh, in terms of I have family support here. And um, I haven't gone out, I haven't been able to go out and create a network. And I feel that hole. It's been so comforting, though, to remember that every single person on the planet is in the same boat. <laughs> you know, I think it's really beautiful. The gift of it is I've been a hard driving achievement junkie my entire life. And it's really like the universe or whatever you believe in is going sit down. Sit your butt down. And... I'm valuing just walking my puppy, making cookies for my kid, getting through a day. And I am expecting so much less of myself than I ever did. 
and I'm having a much better time, <laughs> even though obviously I have deep feelings about it. And I, I, you know, there's a collective pain that I feel the last, yeah, we won't go there, but some things happened a little bit before the inauguration that I found quite heartbreaking. And that pain, that pain, that I look, the pain, the planet crawls up inside of me. I'm an actor. I'm an empath. So many of us are. And I just give myself the space to feel that shame is not allowed. The word should is, is, is a curse word, <laughs> you know, and just grace and kindness. And it's the long game. Like at the end of the day, am I going to care that I comp I did my to-do list or am I going to care that I went outside, took off my shoes, stood in the grass and stared at the moon, <laughs> you know? What's going to make me feel more sane? Walking my puppy to school or, you know, with my kid to school or cleaning up or checking some things off the things I should do. Is it okay that I'm running a little behind for a couple meetings because it just freaking worked out that way? Like, let it go. Just let go. That's how I'm coping. Yeah. Can you just record that for all of us? <laughs> just like, a, I, I just did. need like five minute thing every day that is just you reminding me just before i get out of bed just the daily mantra i'll know. do that i'll send it to you yeah i think i actually think i'm gonna launch a patreon this spring but again i'm not i know i am i'm not putting a date on it because um i don't want to put pressure on myself and there's my theme music <laughs> um and that it's gonna be like simple stuff like i'm just gonna read to people and I'm just going to like once a month, we'll have a gathering where we just like a Instagram live kind of a thing. Only it's just, it's for just the people in the group and they can chat to me and we'll just talk about life. And then once a month, we'll have like a, a big zoom call where we just talk about this stuff. Like we need the space to talk about this stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, then I got a twofer out of that because uh, that is one of the things that I was, you know, that we were curious about what's going on with you. I mean, you can talk about work, obviously. You could talk about side work um, or what is shifting into, you know, main sort of work. Um, I have some cool stuff coming up, but everything's NDA. So I just never talk about it till after it's out. You know, I've got one thing I'm just so excited about, but I, I'm not going to say a word because I'm just like, <laughs> I don't want to screw it up. I don't want to screw it up. Actually, there's a couple of them that are like, what? But yeah, um, I'm releasing more songs releasing more songs. I did my first audio book um, last year. Thank you. And uh, released a song before it. And now the author has engaged me and a writing partner to do some more songs and um, going to release some of my own stuff when I get to it. But again, like this year is just, I don't know when I'm going to do it when I, when I don't feel exhausted, when I don't, my emotions don't need the space or my body doesn't need the space. One of the things I don't know, I've noticed, I don't know if you guys are dealing with this at all is that the more I try to push down and force myself to still function, like my habits will take that and just run it into the ground. My body went, nope. So I have had a couple physical things this year when my body's like, sit down. I'm like, oh man, you know, if you don't listen on one level, it comes back on another one. So you might as well listen the first time. <laughs> Very that. Very yeah, that. An exploding gallbladder will do that. Right? Like we, it's, it's, it somatizes like our experience. I was going to, the, I have a frozen shoulder and it's healing well, but it's, wow, that's a thing. I hope you never get. Um, oh, it's excruciating. And I was, the first time I went to find one of the uh, specialists I'm working with, I couldn't find the office. And I just started like getting rageful and crying. And I was like, what in God's name? You just can't find an office. And I was like, oh, I don't feel physical pain. It comes out of my emotions. Like I could power through anything in the world, but once I get emotional, that's my cue. Like, oh, I've been ignoring my body <laughs> and now it's going, I'm going to get you. I'm going to go through this door. If you won't listen to that door, I'm going through this door. <laughs> like, oh, cause I'll get embarrassed in a hot second. Like I just overreacted. Oh no. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It's all a cycle. Physical connects to mental, mental connects to physical. It's yeah, it does. Yeah, and it's funny too, because being, you know, in lockdown, you end up, like, I feel like I was better about taking care of myself when we weren't in lockdown, when I didn't have as much time. Yeah. And now it's been a real battle to, like, get outside and, you yeah. know, actually exercise and yeah. things where I, I kind of had it built into a schedule before and now... I'm like, eh, I can do it later. I can yeah. do it later. I can do it tomorrow. I can do it tomorrow. And and um, so I'm trying to kind of jolt myself back into, you know. People don't realize the amount of energy it takes to manage 
chaos and difficulty. We are going through a planetary trauma. We're in a planetary trauma. In the U.S., we've lost 400,000 people in a year. All to the same thing. And that doesn't count everybody else who's died of everything else. You know, I lost my father during this whole thing. And it wasn't of, it wasn't COVID, you know, but because of COVID, I couldn't, I could only be with him virtually. Like we could only sit with him that way. And like, we're all going through collective traumas and people forget, like, how many times a day do you stop yourself going, oh, I can't do it this way. I got to do it that way. That takes mental energy to manage. And you can't just dismiss that and expect yourself to be doing the same. It's like when you've had a baby or you've just moved and you don't know where everything is. You can't find anything. You don't know what you're supposed to be doing. You know, it's the same level of stress. They need to put pandemic on that list of top 10 stressors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Public speaking and pandemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either or. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I found that the 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 tricky part about the self care thing is is I'm looking to find the balance between what are the what are the things that I'm doing for myself that are truly helping me and truly making me healthier and you know and getting through this and what are those band aids that are really just you know. Uh, just doing the mildest of helping the moment, but not going to help me in the lo like. I agree. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to make light of it, like you know, eating five pints of ice cream. Right. There's that, you know. Um, but yeah, or just you know, or drowning in the social media or video games or something like that to take your mind off. Like you know, how much of that is just I can't deal. Yeah. And and by not dealing, I'm not helping myself. And how much of it is the stuff where let me engage with this for a little bit so that I can heal as opposed to just yeah. cover it over. I don't think we can know that. I think sometimes you're like, I just needed to lose three weeks in that game because I couldn't do anything else. I just couldn't do anything else. And, you know, what would you say to, uh, I was talking to somebody the other day and listing all the stuff that's gone down for me in the last 18 months. And I was just like, and I, but I still feel like I should be able, she's just like, stop. <laughs> If I just told you all that stuff, what would you say to me? And I was like, don't expect yourself to be productive for six months. Just go take a bath, do the minimum you have to do. And and I would say that to all of us right now, like, don't just be good to yourself. And And you know what? You need what you need. If you're not hurting anybody, if you're not permanently scarring your health markers, let it go. Let it go. It'll come back. It'll come back when it comes back. I mean... I, don't, I look at the whole pandemic in a little, one of the lenses that I look through is like, we have been vile to this planet. We have abused the crap out of this planet. And, you know, P Pachamama takes care of us. <laughs> she gives us what we need to get by. And we would push on her. And the corporate corporate interests would push on her and would, there's an amazing book called um, confessions of an economic hitman about how these massive but very very dark hidden you know not very well known corporations in the u.s would want resources of developing nations and they would hire an economic hitman to go in do a presentation to the leadership of that country some small south american or whatever african country and say, hey, we're going to build this infrastructure and we're going to create this manufacturing thing here. We're going to come take all these resources out of your country and and uh, it's going to be great. They would bring in all U.S. personnel to work on it. They'd hire the country's people for day labor and they would decimate their natural resources and then leave them stranded. And some families who wouldn't sign on for it were killed. You know, um, that's a very interesting book. It's called Confessions of an Economic Hitman. But to tie it back to the pandemic, we have just bulldozed the planet's resources and the planet will push back and then they'll bull bring a bigger bulldozer and do it again. And this time the planet sent her smallest soldier to go sit down, <laughs> you know, mm. and we have to, we have to, you know, it's really sit down and learn the lessons of community and cooperation and stillness and the long game, a sustainable society a sustainable economy sustainable in that you know you're not going to drain your resources you're not going to drain your people you're not going to create a situation where pitchforks are coming at you yeah 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 
I'm going to go back and edit this and stick little like pop-up videos. I'm dating myself, but little <laughs> pop-up video bubbles that have the names of these books and you know, yeah. reading materials. Cause yeah. it's kind of great. Yeah. It's really interesting. I mean, there's, there's so many in the, <laughs> I listened to the audiobook of uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, and for the first 30 minutes, this was me on my counter. No. <laughs> I was just like, no, we didn't do what? What? You know, and it's from it's someone who was before that, baby. <laughs> oh, God. You know, I, ignorance is sometimes bliss, but it's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. I always say, when you're an ostrich with your head in the sand, what's sticking up? What's going to get kicked? <laughs> exactly. You got to find that. You know, they say yeah, it's all about balance of, you know, staying informed and yeah. um, so much of what we talk about. If you guys are just joining us for the first time, um, this is Between Two Nerds. We're uh, an offshoot of nerdsvote.com. Uh, we're a group of, we started out as just voice actors and now we've grown into a whole wonderful group of notable nerds and we interview our notable nerds on this show to talk about the importance of remaining engaged in our uh, democratic process through voting, through contacting your reps, through, um, you know, sporting our awesome gear. You can check us out at um, nerdsvote.com. And we're chatting with the amazing Jennifer Hale. Um, Jen, if we wanted to find you on social media, where would we find you? You will find me. Uh, I'm on Twitter at jhaletweets. And Instagram, I am at jhalegram, G-R-A-M. And that's it. My website, jenniferhale.com. I try to keep it updated. If I get a new song, I'll throw it on there. Yeah. So the song, how yeah. how do we find the song? Oh, yeah. Um, if you search Jennifer Hale on Spotify, Apple, you know, all the platforms, my first release was called Never. And my second one was uh, Sea of Stars. And uh, I love them. I love them both so much. Um, those are the two that are out right now. There's a couple more, but they've gone out through Christopher Paolini's website for his book, To Sleep in the Sea of Stars, because they're done specifically for that novel. Um, yeah, yeah, super cool, super cool, yeah. Now, are you, are you starting to do, I know you've done bazillions of um, video games and, mm -hmm. uh, and cartoons and everything else that you can possibly do for both, you know, lots of voice acting, some face acting, all kinds of good stuff. But um, are you doing more audiobooks? Is that something? I've you're... actually just been approached to do my second one. Um, oh, I, yeah. did the, <laughs> I did the first one. I won't say any more about it because I don't know what I'm supposed to say. You no, know, I'm not. I feel like such a jerk when I'm like, I'm usually the person that's like, <laughs> NDA, I can't talk about anything. And now I'm like, <laughs> what do you have going on? <laughs> <laughs> and that's our, that's our dichotomy, right? Or like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm stuck. Um, yeah, I I, I um, had never done one before, and Christopher Paolini approached me last year, last uh, late last spring, early summer, and and they asked if I would do the audiobook for To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, and so I'd never done one before, and the first one I ever did was 880 plus pages with around 50 characters. <laughs> it's just like, woo, deep end, but I loved it. I love that book, love it, and um, just had such a good time doing it. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, it's really fun. You know, there's one thing that I want to ask of everybody or just, just put in everybody's head as we're going through the times to come and the times we've been through and the times that we're in just for me, one of the most useful things I've ever found was to focus in on the energy of what I'm being. Like when I disagree with people, don't become disagreeable. You know, when I'm when I can't get things done, just accept it and be kind. Be the be the energy that you want to have come at you in the world. I think is what I'm trying to say. That's just something I would I would put out there to all of us because it'll be a really cool world when we get there. Yeah. Well, that is a I, I can't believe the time because <laughs> we said we'd keep you for. 50 minutes and we're already going over. Um, it's a wonderful send off to everybody who's watching. Um, Thank you. Really appreciate you being here. Um, I love you guys. And I'm so great. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for showing up every week consistently. You're just, you're always here. And you, I'm looking you in the camera, looking you in the eyeballs. You made a difference and you continue to every day. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, thank you everyone that that watches the show that has been here from the beginning or is just joining in now. Um, you know, the and work got out the vote. 
Yeah, you guys made a, a difference. Um, no matter what party you voted for, more people turned out in this election than in a century, right? So- uh, You, Courtney, and you, JP, too, you <laughs> did this. You did wow. this. And I, as a citizen and as a friend, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and obviously it's just, it, it does, it takes a country to stay involved. And so we're so happy that you're here and you're, you know, uh, on this journey with us, even in an off year, um, <laughs> there's no off years. Um, so please um, join us next week. We'll have another amazing guest. We're changing the format. Obviously we're on YouTube now instead of Instagram live. So it's a little bit different. We hope that Jen, you'll be able to join us uh, next Tuesday when this goes on the YouTube to answer questions in the chat and hang out with the, our viewers. So that's how it's going to roll out for this year. Let us know how you uh, feel about it. You can reach us at nerdsvote at gmail.com. You can hit us up on our website, nerdsvote.com. And we are on socials, JP. Uh, we are on Instagram and Twitter at nerdsvote. And also, if you still use Facebook. Oh, nerdsvote USA. Mm -hmm. that one even though the nerds vote is for everyone no matter where you are even canada <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> oh hey now um so thank you guys so much really appreciate it and jen thank you so much for being with us today thank you thank you so much you guys thanks jen have a great week guys thank you.